Transmutation grants access to approximately one-third of all mods in the game, including stance mods, necromech mods, archwing mods, and more. It's not the perfect answer to obtaining mods, but it can pay out hugely. On top of this, the mods it can reward include some highly sought-after mods worth a fair chunk of platinum. But do the numbers actually support doing this? I'm the Engineer. let's solve a practical problem. I'm only focusing on common, uncommon and rare mods here. Amalgam mods function like rare mods for transmuting, albeit more expensive, while Requiem and River mods do their own thing. Transmuting common mods is, as expected, the worst result. Each transmutation is 12,000 credits, and is extremely likely to return another common mod, with single digit percent chance of anything else. In my own test of 400 common mod transmutations, I was a bit unlucky at least according to community provided stats, and received less than 1% non-common mods this way. As for common mod outputs, the vast majority of those mods are, would you believe it, common. Therefore, extremely few of them are sought after. In fact, out of 61 possible mods from transmutation of the common rarity, only 3 of them have any real trade volume to speak of on Warframe Market. That's True Punishment, Necromech Deflection, and Necromech Enemy Sense. This still has actual value to you though, which I'll cover in just a bit. Transmuting uncommon mods costs twice as much as with a common set, but it's more likely to yield something of value, especially as a significant number of stance mods are of the uncommon variety. Around 40 of the 129 uncommon mods available through transmutation have a typical daily trade volume of at least one, meaning there is some market for them, though only about a dozen or two have much more interest than that. According to community sources, you should expect an uncommon transmutation to yield an uncommon mod 80% of the time, common 15%, and rare 5%. Again, my luck didn't favour me, giving 91% uncommon and not even 1% rare after 400 transmutations. Such is the nature of RNG. Worthwhile finds include Necromech Rage, Electrified Barrel, Energy Amplifier, Final Harbinger, and Equilibrium. And looking at rare mod transmutation, costing 36,000 credits per try, the majority of the 119 outputs have a noticeable market volume, with a couple dozen of them seeing double digit trade volumes almost every day on Warframe Market for PC. In the rare mods, we have options like Condition Overload, Bullet Dance, Critical Focus, Dual Rounds, Tempo Royale, and Bite. All of these are valuable mods, and all are powerful mods. Half of all rare mod transmutations output a rare mod also 40% only give a common mod, so it can feel a bit swingy when you do it yourself. In a nutshell then, it's safe to say that transmutation is the door to a huge swathe of mods, many with significant value. But I hear you ask, how much value? Well, I've compiled the record of pretty much every transmutable mod, their average selling values according to Warframe Market this last month on PC, and the expected returns from transmutation on a theoretical level. Oh, and I also did 900 mod transmutations myself, and recorded every single result. 18 million credits chucked into transmutation for a video. If you need any more data than that to be sure of what I'm saying, you can gather it yourself, quite frankly. To properly assess this, I'm treating every mod that either sells on average for less than 5 plat, or sells less than 1 a day, as worthless. Nothing. If you're happy to sell things worth less than 5 plat per trade, you do you. Is on there approximately 25% more platinum, but also take nearly twice as many trades to do so. Mostly I've set these limits to filter out any bogus values for mods that no one actually buys. The result is that, theoretically, the average return for common mod transmutation is 0.5 platinum, for uncommon mods it's 1.6 platinum, and for transmuting rare mods it's 2.8 platinum. In my own personal tests, I actually only got an estimate of 0.4 plat, 1.5 plat, and 2.5 plat, respectively. Again, bad luck on my part. What this means is that if you have a million credits for use in transmutation, you can afford 83 common mod transmutations, which will give you an expected approximate value of about 41 platinum, or 41 uncommon transmutations with an expected return around 65 platinum, or you could do 27 rare mod transmutations, with an expected return around 76 platinum. This does also require you to have 332 common mods, 
or 164 uncommon or 108 rare mods to melt down in this process. Unless you do a lot of index, the rare set might just be that bit rarer for you, but most people should be able to find a few hundred spare common or uncommon mods soon enough. This is only considering the mods that are saleable by my earlier definition as well. You'll also be getting a bunch of mods that aren't really market friendly, but at the same time are mods you'd be paying up to half a dozen plat for if you wanted to buy it off another player. A big one here are stance mods for less desired weapons. If you're transmuting to get mods rather than platinum, you're making an even greater return in a sense, as you're saving yourself the trouble of farming those more pesky mods or buying them outright. Now, transmutation does need you to consume quite a number of mods alongside your credits, which I know a lot of people are happy to just melt down for endo. But hold up, you can buy endo with platinum via the trading of items and sculptures. After spending 1 million credits on bronze mod transmutation, our worst platinum gain, you would have used up 332 common mods, which otherwise could have been traded in for 1,660 endo. The absolute worst Ayatin sculpture for total endo is the Ayatin Aya sculpture, worth just 1,425 endo when fully filled with cyan stars. You don't need any amber ones for that. If I was really impatient and didn't try to get the best prices, I could at the time of recording this video buy six of those sculptures fully socketed for 41 plat and still have some change, and that would give me 8,550 endo. This means, for the cost of 1 million credits and a little bit of trading, those common mods are now worth over 5 times as much endo, and I'll probably get some lesser found but cheap mods along the way. Doing this with uncommon or rare mods grants even greater returns. If you're more sensible with your purchases, this goes even further. Taking the absolute best sculpture trade on Warframe Market, which I'm not going to name because the moment I say it, this will be wrong, you could buy 21,600 endo worth of sculptures for that same 41 platinum. That sure beats 1,660 endo and a million credits lying around doing nothing. Alternatively to all of that, you could not buy all of the sculptures, just enough to cover the cost of the lost endo, and then pocket the rest of the platinum to spend on literally anything else. I'm specifically telling you that about 300 pointless redirection mods and a million credits can be turned into, on average, a couple Warframe slots with just a teeny bit of trading. Unless this video blows up and ruins the whole market forever, which it won't, I think. So head on over to the index with your best index frame, or a loot frame squad if you've got reliable friends, and farm up some credits and gold mods to make pure platinum. But putting plat aside, I can also clear up a lesser known part of transmutation. The benefit of doing 900 mod transmutations is that I also gathered a rather daunting spreadsheet load of information useful in quantifying something else merely hinted at before. One of the Warframe tooltips that pops up in the mod screen is that the polarity of mods affects the return from transmutation. Not only can I tell you this is true, I can tell you by how much. Ish. All told, transmuting a specific polarity made the chance of the returned mod being the same polarity about 36% higher than expected while making all other polarities show up around 11-15% to less. This is a multiplier to the chances though. Transmuting a specific polarity doesn't mean you have at least a 36% chance of getting that polarity back, just that it's around 36% more common than a completely random pick would be. In other words, if you should have a 1% chance of getting a specific polarity, matching the transmutation raises that to 1.36%, or thereabouts. This is not an exact figure, just an empirical estimate. Your mileage will vary, but this is based on hundreds of samples, so it's as close to the exact answer as I care for, quite frankly. There is one other mechanic in the game to guarantee the polarity of the output though, and that is the transmutation cores from Cephalon Simaris. Coming in at 5,000 standing a pop, they remove the credit cost, require one less mod in transmutation, and fix the polarity to match the core you purchased. I can tell you now that for all transmutations, this is a terrible idea. Even if there is a specific polarity you are looking for, you're still fighting RNG to get the mod you want, when you could usually be much better off just buying that one mod outright. You can even afford buying your chosen mod by using your Samara standing for a better item like the Looter mod for Carrier. The absolute best use case for transmutation cores 
is when transmuting rare mods only and using a Midori core. This will improve the average value of a rare mod transmutation by less than one plat per core, which is a waste of standing. So, don't do it. In terms of a transmutation strategy then, you should first focus on transmuting gold mods, V polarity if you have the freedom to be so picky, but then the rest of them, followed by silver mods, doing again V polarity first, and if you run out of gold and silver mods transmute, focus on transmuting D polarity bronze mods or dash polarity next. Transmuting V polarity bronze mods should be a last resort as they are just the worst for returns. And that's transmutation in a nutshell. If you have spare credits, you can turn useless bronze, silver and gold into pure platinum through the power of transmutation, without having to miss out on any end along the way. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them live on Twitch too. And as always, get mods, make plat, and fight well, Tenno.